the polytheists who couldn't find our beloved prophet had gone mad. They started to search for him all over Mecca. They couldn't find Abu Bakr at his house either. They became extremely anxious and then decided to make an announcement. We will grant hundred camels to one who finds Muhammad. All the thieves, murderers and people who had gone mad with anger that heard this announcement gathered around. Some had daggers and some had swords. They were also people who could follow clues and trails very well. It wasn't too long until they found the traces of our prophet and Abu Bakir in the desert. They followed the trail and arrived at the skirts of mountain Sever. One of them called out, The traces finish here. I can guarantee you that they can't have gone further than that cave. Our prophet's enemies came to the front of the cave. One of them was Umayye ibn Halif. Our Prophet and his devoted friend Abu Bakir could see what was happening and they could hear what they were saying, but the polytheists couldn't see them. At that moment, Abu Bakir felt very uneasy. He said in sadness, Dear Prophet of Allah, if they were to kill me, I don't care for my own life. I am an ordinary person, but Allah forbid, if they were to harm you, what would become of this community? Our beloved Prophet trusted Allah and remained very calm. He said, Dear Ibu Bekir, don't worry, Allah is with us. Ibu Bekir felt a little more at ease, but he was still very anxious. Dear Messenger of Allah, they will see us if they come and look inside. Our Prophet was still very calm. He said, Ibu Bekir, what do you think can happen to us with Allah by our side? Are you afraid that we might get caught? One of the polytheists said, Let's look inside that cave. Abu Bakir and our prophet heard what was being said. One of the men came close to the entrance of the cave, but went back without looking inside. The others asked, Why didn't you look inside? He replied, There are a couple of pigeons that have made a nest at the entrance. There is no way that they can be there. If someone was inside, would those birds stay there? Umayye ibn Halif yelled at his men, Why are you still wandering around the cave? Can't you see the spider's web? I can guarantee that spider's web was made even before Muhammad was born. The, the polytheists then left and in this way, Allah saved and protected our Prophet from his enemies with just two pigeons and a spider. The Muslim people of Medina had heard that our Prophet had left Mecca. They were waiting impatiently and excitedly for his arrival. Every day after morning prayer, they headed for the streets. They then went back to their homes during the midday heat. In the meantime, a Jewish man had climbed up to his roof. He noticed that some people in white clothes were approaching. He thought that they must be the people who the Muslims of Medina were waiting for. He called out loud, Muslims, the person you have been waiting for is coming. This good news came down on the streets of Medina like a bolt of lightning. The city suddenly turned into a place of festival. Immediately, they all went in that direction and met with our Prophet. They had been waiting for his arrival for days. They couldn't stop looking at his holy face. Our Prophet rested there for some time. He then went to a village called Kuba and stayed there for 10 days. He asked for a small mosque to be built there. The first mosque that was built for Muslims was given the name the Mosque of Kuba. Our Prophet left Kuba on a Friday and headed for Medina. He was riding on his camel called Kapsa. The Muslim people of Medina gathered around him and everyone was very happy. Our Prophet was now among the hundreds of people who loved him dearly. The earth and the skies were ringing with the voices of people calling Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
The Muslims of Medina were full of joy as they were finally reunited with their beloved Prophet, who they had been waiting so long for. Our Prophet had released his camel and headed to the inner parts of the city of Medina. There was a feeling of celebration in the city. The young, old, everyone was chanting rhymes. They were celebrating the arrival of our Prophet to the city. The feeling of happiness could be seen, and the women's faces and little children were wearing their most beautiful clothes. They were running around in joy. The entire city was echoing with voices calling, Dear Muhammad has arrived and honored our city. Dear Muhammad, dear Prophet. Our Prophet was making his way through the displays of happiness. Everyone was saying the same thing. Dear Prophet, be a guest in our house. He then found a fair way of deciding which house he would be a guest in. He was going to be the guest of the house that his camel knelt down in front of. The holy camel was moving and turning left to right. This carried on for some time. After a while, he knelt down on an empty piece of land. Our prophet didn't get down straight away and soon after the camel got up again. It carried on moving a little bit more. All of a sudden, the camel turned around and went to the first place where it knelt down. He knelt down again and this time stayed there. Everyone was watching the camel. Will our prophet stay where the camel had knelt down? No one really knew. Just then, some little girls went up to our prophet. One of them was playing a tambourine and the others were singing welcome. They sang these words, It is so nice to have the company of our prophet. Our prophet responded to their sincere actions. He smiled and asked, Do you love me, children? The girls all replied, Yes, we love you, dear prophet. Our Prophet then replied back by saying, Allah knows in my heart that I love you too. The camel didn't get up after the second time it knelt down. Our Prophet got down from the camel and said, This is our stop. The closest house to there was the house of Abu Ayyub. Abu Ayyub welcomed our Prophet inside and said, This is my house and this is my door. It is open to you. Our Prophet went inside among the cheers of the other Muslims. This is how our Prophet started his life in Medina. Our Prophet was now a guest at Abu Ayyub's house. Many Muslims were coming to visit him all the time. Our Prophet was staying in a room at the bottom floor and invited his guests there. He would also spend his nights there. Abu Ayyub and his wife would stay on the top floor, but this didn't last very long. They felt uncomfortable about this situation and said, The Prophet of Allah stays at the basement while we stay at upstairs. That's not right, is it? Abu Ayyub decided to talk to our Prophet about this. Dear Prophet of Allah, You live downstairs while we live upstairs. This is not acceptable for us. You must stay upstairs and we must stay downstairs. Our Prophet saw it fit to remain where he was. Hundreds of people were coming to visit him every day and upstairs wouldn't be appropriate. He said, Dear Ayyub, it is better I stay where I am. This was our Prophet's wish and there was nothing that neither Ayyub nor his wife could do. Then something happened. A jar containing water that was upstairs broke. Their hearts jumped in fear. The Messenger of Allah was staying downstairs. He could be disturbed if water drips on him, and the Ayyub wouldn't allow this to happen. Water began to spill everywhere and it was possible for it to drip through the floorboards. They looked around, but couldn't find anything that would soak up the water. There was only a folded up blanket in the corner and it was the only blanket in the house. Without hesitating, they took the blanket and put it over the water. This way, they stopped the water from dripping through the floor. Abu Ayyub took a sign of relief. 
Our prophet spent seven months in this house, and the Muslims of Medina did their best to serve our prophet.